following the transformation of a bunch of plasterers, factory workers and supermarket shelf stackers into highly disciplined firefighters. Only the best from course 497 of the West Midlands Fire School have made it through 13 gruelling weeks to this, the final exercise before the passing out parade. Within days, they'll be posted to their fire stations and none of their lives will ever be the same again. You've taken on not a job, not an occupation, but a way of life. You're following in the footsteps of some tremendously brave people, people who I have immense respect for. So let me say from start that you have got to come up to their standard. We're not going to bring the fire service down to yours. The only way I can say is I've had enough. Had enough. It was time I needed a new challenge in my life. I know how to do plastering. Plastering's only paid from the neck down. I might have to use my head a bit now. I'll just wait and see and see what it brings, because I'm looking forward to everything they can throw at me. And hopefully I'll be able to get, you know, get over whatever they throw at me. From this point on, your lives have changed. You're no longer just people in the street. People will look up to you. You're members of the fire service. That's something that hasn't been easily earned. And we're not prepared to see you drag the standard down. You either achieve that, or you leave here in civilian dress. My title was production supervisor. There was, I would have thought, about 100 people on the shop floor. In between us, we managed them all. Our jobs were just to make sure the furniture was made on time and the quality was right, basically. Recruits are selected for the course after two days of rigorous tests, both mental and physical. I was thinking about the fire service because I just can't handle the thought of spending the rest of my life in an office or in a factory. Uh, and I wanted to go out and do something which offered a bit more variety um, and absolutely something a bit positive as well. The final test of endurance for Dan Burke and the other would-be firefighters. The candidates are timed as they drag a heavy dummy around a burnt-out building. Come on, keep going. Keep going, up the stairs. Push it! That's it, come on, up, watch it. Out of 28 hopefuls on this last test, only eight succeeded. Come on, come on, Come on, you want this job? Come on! You all right? Yeah. Yeah? It's better for you, you work. Yeah. Police don't know you've done it, then. Uh -huh. Yeah. Brilliant. All right, with the yeah. other thing. Oh, yeah. You can't help feeling proud, proud to be wearing a uniform, proud to be showing not what you are, but what you want to be. Outside your room, time to the session when you finish. The first challenge on day one for the 29 successful recruits is getting into their brand new kit in under four minutes. I think we're teaching them discipline for the fire service as well. You know, when we give them an order, they've got to do it. Because on the fire ground, if they're given an order, they've got to carry it out without any questions asked. So we try and instill that in them now, but there's a lot of self-discipline that they need as well. And probably 50% of it has got to come from them. When we teach them what we want, or we tell them what we want to start with, and expect them to do it. And the thing is, we expect them to do it instantly from day one and it's never going to happen. And that's why it seems that we're harsher on them in the first few weeks. But as they start getting their feet and they realise what's expected of them, the self-discipline then starts coming in themselves. Have we got one crew out yet? Right, yeah, probably back, back in, get inside. yourself properly dressed. Back inside. Teamwork. Hold your colours down. Body checks. Are they getting dressed on the landing? In your room if you're getting dressed. Put it on. Mr Russell. Yes, sir. When they leave here, if they don't have that discipline instilled from day one, they'll go to station. There won't be monitored as closely as they are here. And if they get up one morning and think, it's a bit cold, I'm not going to work today, or I'll go late, then that fire appliance may not be on the run. So, therefore, it may not turn out to a fire. People may die. 
Not do your helmets to protect your head. It's no good sitting back here, is it? Still got films on your visors. Out. Don't get dressed on my landing. Off the landing, get properly dressed. It was baptism by fire. It's, it's the only way I can describe it. You didn't know which way to turn. You running one way, then running the other. It's, everything was up in the air. You're so unsettled um, and you're not really used to the routine of things and how it's going. It's just total and utter mayhem, really. Your brain's in a big scramble. Seven and a quarter minutes so far. Waste of time. If that was a fire call, it'd be a waste of time. You'd still be getting dressed while the fire's burning down. Waste of time. Up at six next morning, not to learn how to put out fires, but to carry out Thank cleaning you. duties. Domestic chores are all part of a strict routine the new recruits will have to get used to. Thank you. Right first time. Excellent. Thank you. Cheer up. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed. When I say change direction, a gentle running action to turn you around to face the other way. Keep going. Do you all understand? Yes, change direction. Good. You didn't all understand, did you? For a large portion of, of the course, language, they, they've they never on, seen go. this Keep before. Going. You imagine a 30, uh, up to like 35, if you like, year old individual coming into this yourself? and they'd been a plasterer. Mom or a plumber, you know, it would be horrendous for them. You know, something completely different. They haven't to say, sir, to people. They've never, they may have never said sir in their life. Good, good. You will be a team. 16 weeks, you will be a team. Three. Stop, I smeg, I'm on the spot. And you can see the faces, you know, thinking, what have I done? <laughs> They're questioning themselves for quite some time. Ready? Go! Go! Get it, Tom! Come on! Come on! That's good! Keep going! Keep going! Stop! Man. Come on! Good faces, nice face. What's your name? Well, great face. It's not easy. It's having time to do everything, I think, the problem is. It's, uh, it's definitely not easy. Especially when you can't find out what the hell's going on. <laughs> I mean, it is a discipline service. So you've got to be able to take the discipline or you shouldn't be in it. Whether, um, you know, I think I can take it at the moment, but We'll see further down the line if I, if I actually like the job, but I think I will. The parades are important. Everything we do is important. The, the point of it is that we're, it's a uniformed organisation, and I think the public expect people in uniform to, you know, to be smart, and that's quite right too. But what we're trying to get over to the recruits is that it doesn't matter what they're doing, whether it's polishing a pair of shoes, whether it's operating a pump, everything they do, they've got to do to their absolute best ability. <laughs> so it's, it's getting away a of life over to them as much as anything. Steaming. Crew firefighter, Duggan, sir. Front rank, stand at, face. Right, Duggan, you need to dress your cap a bit. It looks like it's come straight out of the box. You've also got a bit of loose cotton there on your peak cap. Get that trimmed off. Your sleeves, OK, we've got the creases in the right place, but they're nowhere near sharp enough. More pressure with the iron, both sides. Same with your trousers. Shoes nowhere up to scratch, Duggan. Get it sorted for tomorrow morning. Sir. Recruit firefighter Burke, sir. Can you pull your arms in a bit, Burke? Stick them out yes, to the side, that's better. OK, I'm not too sure what you're doing, but you look almost deformed. Just relax a bit. Not impressed. I'll see you tomorrow morning, 8.30. Creases in your jacket, virtually non-existent. All your kit. Tomorrow morning, 8.30, my office. Sir. 